No one in the West predicted what ISIL would become, but they should have. At the time, though, the focus was on the aftermath of the Arab Spring. In 2012, in the middle of what was now a full-blown civil war, the Syrian military was accused of committing human rights abuses. It brought this warning from U.S. President Barack Obama. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. A year later, Obama said he had proof chemical weapons had been used. He tried to build public support for military intervention. It didn't work. The United States had just come off of two major wars in the Middle East, and there was, no, there was very little appetite for a third. Inside Syria, armed groups were waging war for their own ends. ISIL, forged in the aftermath of the 2003 invasion of Iraq, was there, operating in mainly Sunni areas. Then it was on to northern Iraq, where U.S.-trained Iraqi troops dropped their guns and ran. When ISIL fighters came within 40 kilometers of the regional Kurdish capital of Erbil, the U.S. air war began. But it was the beheading on camera of the journalists James Foley and Stephen Saltloff that got the public's attention. The beheadings of American journalists, I think, had, had an effect. It had, it, there's no question it had an effect. That plus the strategic element, I think, you know, that can't be overlooked as well, the idea that you know, this, here's a country, Iraq, where the United States fought a decade-long war, and now a, a new group, a new group of insurgents is actually taking territory. I think that had a powerful effect on Americans as well. Since the start of the conflict, the official Syrian opposition has begged Washington to give it better weapons to fight the Assad regime, but to no avail. It's only now that U.S. forces have started training opposition fighters, ironically, not to fight the forces of President Assad, but ISIL. If this group is to fight ISIS, displace it, take control of territory and secure the population, either the regime will have to leave them alone or they'll have to fight the regime. It's possible, I guess, in the abstract that the regime would leave them alone uh, for deconfliction purposes with the United States. I think it's very unlikely, though. It's too simplistic to suggest that had the U.S. intervened in Syria's civil war earlier, that it could have prevented the spread of ISIL across the region. But it is clear that the Obama administration's efforts to limit its own footprint haven't worked. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, the State Department.